meet these challenges head on? Well, I think you have to pack some parachutes. Let me explain that. I sat down in a restaurant not so long ago, about two tables over, a guy kept looking at me. He stood up, he walked over to my table, he pointed at me and he said, you're Captain Plum. I said, yes sir, I'm Captain Plum. You're that guy, you flew jet fighters in Vietnam, you're a fighter pilot, part of that Top Gun outfit, shot down off the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk, you parachuted into enemy hands, you spent six years as a prisoner of war. Somewhat dumbfounded, I looked up at this guy and I said, how in the world did you know all that? <laughs> he chuckled and he smiled and he said, because I packed your parachute tell you this, with this guy that runs around the country making speeches, suddenly I was speechless. The best I could do was stagger to my feet, reach out a very grateful hand of thanks. He came up with just the proper words. The guy grabbed my hand, he pumped my arm, and he said, I guess it worked. <laughs> I, said, I said, indeed it did, my friend, and I must tell you I've said a lot of prayers of thanks for your nimble fingers but I didn't realize I'd ever had the opportunity of expressing my gratitude in person. He said, were all the panels there? I said, I must be honest with you, they weren't. Of the 18 panels I was supposed to have in that parachute, had only 15 good ones. Three of the panels were torn, but it wasn't your fault, it was mine. I ejected from that F-4 Phantom jet at 600 knots close to the ground. That's what tore the panels in the parachute. I said, but let me ask you a question. Do you, uh, do you keep track of all the parachutes you pack? <laughs> do you know of all the lives you've saved? Guy said, no. Uh, th this is the most important part of the conversation at night. Maybe the most important thing I say this morning. I think it deals directly with premier service. I think it deals directly with, with bringing dreams home. I think it deals directly with your job. Here's what he said. No, he said, I don't keep track of all the parachutes I pack. It's enough gratification for me just to know that I've served. Here's a sailor, well below the waterline of this aircraft carrier. The guy stands at a long wooden table and he weaves the shrouds and folds the silks of these parachutes while jet jockey, the top gun, zooming around the sky at twice the speed of sound. I couldn't have cared less about the guy down there in the hole until one day my parachute came along and he packed mine up for me. Isn't that what this business is about? Oh, we have to keep track, of course. We have to have the knowledge, we have to know the industry, we have to know the competition, and we have to keep all these things in our minds. But at the end of the day, your value, your value to your customer, your value to your community has to be measured in how well you serve. That's what this business is all about. So the question becomes, how's your parachute packing coming along? The prison cell I was in in Vietnam was eight feet long and eight feet wide. I remember distinctly the dimensions of that little cell. I could pace three steps in one direction before I ran into a wall. Then I had the opportunity of turning around and pacing three steps the other way. I'm describing this scenario to you somewhat semi-dramatically. Please excuse the drama. In no way do I intend to endure sympathy from this crowd, but I think the most value I can be to you, professionally and personally, in the few minutes we're together, whether you come here from San Francisco or Boston or Toronto, whether you're a company guy or a franchisee, a manager or a mother, whether your goal in life is to change the world or to change a diaper, the most value I can be in the few minutes we're together is to invite you into my little cell. There's a great deal to be learned here. So for the next few moments, I'd like to ask you to try your best to smell the stench of that imaginary two-gallon bucket over there in the corner I call my toilet. 
like you to try to feel the baking heat of a tropical summer in a tin roof prison cell 10,000 miles away from the good life. I'd like you to try to taste the salt in the corners of your mouth from the sweat and the tears and the blood. Not that you'll ever be prisoners of war, God forbid. But if I do my job this afternoon, you'll see where some of the same kinds of challenges you and I face daily with your sales associates, with the kids, in the office, at home, same challenges we face daily are the very challenges that I faced in that prison cell. And more importantly, your response to the challenge, if you're going to succeed in this business, has to be the same recipe of responses I used over there just to survive. See if you can identify 24 years old and in command of a multi-million dollar jet fighter. See this hand? I have two throttles here. I shove these throttles into the afterburners. I can go 1,400 miles an hour, and that's a long way from a John Deere. <laughs> See this pinky? I have a trigger on my control stick. Pull the trigger, release the missiles. I can knock down enemy airplanes that I can't even see. I really am the top gun. I'm the best of the best. I'm the guy that always stands tall. I'm the one that's never afraid. Hey, hey, I'm probably bulletproof. How about you? Ever feel bulletproof? Boy, we've had some good years in real estate, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Boy, it's easy to, to you know, just to, to rake in those listings and, and put our agents out there on the street and just count the profits and and, and, and then we get to the point where we yeah, look at me I'm the best there is I don't need any training I don't need to upgrade my technology I don't need to, 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 to change any of my systems because man I got those customers in the palm of my hand look at that we are doing great we are bulletproof here's the advice when you start feeling bulletproof Check your six o'clock position. You got a missile back there sneaking up your tail. I found in the corner of my prison cell, no cricket, but a little piece of wire. It was about that long, and it was poked through a hole at the base of the cell wall and scratching on my concrete floor, making a, a chirping noise like a cricket. Are you with me? Can you imagine what might be going through your mind in a situation like this? Then can you equate this to a, to, to, to a, a sales presentation or a leadership principle? I'm watching the little wire and I'm thinking to myself, wow, hoo -hoo, somebody wants to network. <laughs> somebody wants to be on my team. <laughs> somebody wants to help me make my numbers. Boy, do I need to tug on that wire. Now, what's the overriding emotion? Why didn't I tug on this wire at first? Hint, it's the same single four-letter word that debilitates you. As managers, as brokers, as parents, as citizens, it's called fear. Oh, another four-letter word, R-I-S-K, risk. You see, I think that's the thing we're missing. Because I think that's the tool that you and I have to use to tap into these resources that we have. It doesn't just fall in your lap, you know? I know what you're saying. Captain, you don't understand what it's like to be a teenager these days. Man, we got all these problems, you know? Everybody's on our case all the time. We got too much to learn. We got so much competition. And, and you know, we got parents, we got teachers, we got, we got coaches, we got, we got peer pressure. Yeah, I understand all that. I understand all that, but you know the only way through this stuff, the only way for you to be as great as you can be is to take a risk, is to step outside your comfort zone, is to kick down whatever those walls are that are bothering you and, and go over there and grab a wire and tug on it. Let's try to measure your value to SCA Americas, okay? Let's measure your value to your team. Let's measure your value to your family. Let's measure your value to your God. It can't be measured in the easy times. Anybody can show up. Notice that? Your true value has to be measured when the heat's on, when things are tough. Your value shows up when you're confused and you don't know the answer and everybody's on your case. Your value shows up when you want to quit and your boss wants you to quit. Or let's turn the coin over. What if you had the perfect life? What if? What if everybody said, 
yes to all your great ideas, okay? What if you only dealt with princes and princesses and beautiful people? You got the feeling, really, would you be as good as you are today? Would you get up as early? Would you dress as neat? Would, you, would we even have a meeting like this? Or what if there was no KC, okay? What if there was no Scott paper, okay? What if there was no Procter and Gamble? What if you had no competition at all? Hmm? Really? Would you try as hard? Would you be as, would you be as, 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 as upfront and close to the edge? Would you as, as proactive? See, here's my point, okay? Hang in there, you're not gonna believe this at first. Here's my point. There's great value in getting blown out of the sky once in a while. There's great value in that wake-up call that forces you and me to re-examine the way we're doing business. Said a little differently, adversity is a horrible thing to waste.